right, guys. So our penultimate topic here before we get into our uh, spoiler review of The Mandalorian Season 2, Episode 1, is about what's actually going to be jumping back into the world of DC. We had a, we had a quick little story here came up, and I thought it, some interesting things. Uh, I just wanted to kind of go over with the, with the boys here. Um, James Gunn did an interview recently about uh, the Suicide Squad where he was essentially given free reigns on uh, uh, just killing anybody. Essentially, anybody, the, the, the Warner Brothers told him that he was allowed to kill anybody he wanted. And someone asked him at one point, uh, man right here, where Mark Tarly Quinn and blah, blah, blah. And he said, no, like I could have killed him if I wanted to. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Like, uh, not, 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 uh, not earth shattering news, but I feel like if James Gunn, if, if in my mind, if I'm Warner Brothers and James Gunn came to me with a script that had him killing off, someone like a harley quinn i'd be like well dude we said you could kill anybody you wanted but like but not, not, harley, not quinn. harley quinn like we can't yeah i don't think anyone's gonna kill off margot robbie like so i don't really think Mar margot robbie's harley quinn is someone that's gonna die but it's it just it's interesting because it's like did they not have any plans for these this is like what kind of worries me with it is like do they not have any plans for any of these characters because they just did a solo movie with harley quinn they had these plans uh in, in the past which has been rumored to be maybe coming back at some point to do a harley and joker movie and i don't know it just it does seem kind of odd to me that they would essentially let him have full control in, in that aspect. Because like, at Marvel, this would never happen. Like Kevin Feige has plans for all of his characters, right? He would be like, you can do whatever you want with X, 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 and X, but you can't do this because we're going to do that over here in like five years. You know what I mean? Like That's how Marvel operates, and Kevin Feige operates. And it does kind of worry me that DC doesn't have something like that in, in play, at, even like now at this point in time, to where any of these existing characters or new characters that James Gunn was able to int either introduce or bring back from the first Suicide Squad, did they just not have any plans for them at all going forward? You know? Like, it's, that's the only thing that kind of worries me about it. Otherwise, I think it's like cool that they were giving them, it definitely is going to keep people on their toes, I guess, watching watching Suicide Squad too because like you know I mean we know now like hell anybody could die. Like But will they? That's the question. I mean like that's a big I feel like that's a big thing to come out with, but like I mean I don't know. That's it just like they can say like oh he can kill anybody, but at the same time it's like will he? God, man. There's obviously characters that are gonna die and there's obviously like I call them I hate to say it like kind of throwaway characters that are just in there for filler but I mean, the whole cast of the Suicide Squad is supposed to be throwaway characters. It's kind of the whole point. Yeah, they're the Suicide Squad. But, I don't know. I just, I, it mainly worries me on the, as a back-end kind of thing. That, like, it just says to me that, like, they don't have future plans. And not as, that is necessarily a bad thing, like, for, like, because, yeah, maybe they don't need a plan for a Harley Quinn movie in the future or whatever. Like, but it's, it's just an odd thing. It's kind of an odd thing. It is odd when you look at something like the Marvel Cinematic Universe and how well and how meticulously that is constructed. Um, but you also look back at when James Gunn came aboard this project and when he started talking with Warner Brothers about doing this project. I mean, he this all started on the heels of the first Suicide Squad. Uh, can't say that. Suicide Squad movie coming out and not doing the business that they thought it would. It still made money, but it didn't do the business, the, the cinematic box office that they, I think they were anticipating or wanted it to. Um, it was critically panned. I mean, I don't, I can't remember a single good uh, review that was put out there about it. You're also on the heels of Justice League being incredibly disappointing. So, and I believe around that time, Warner Brothers restructured much of their entertainment division so you're in a time of real flux i'm not surprised that warner brothers didn't have a lot of plans now i'm not surprised that they don't have a lot of plans now i think warner brothers has been chasing marvel for the past decade and they've been True. trying to they've been trying to get 
their version of the Marvel Cinematic Universe going and they thought they had it with Zack Snyder and then things didn't go as well as they wanted and they tried to stop and shift course. But like the Titanic, that didn't really work. And um, so, you know, we're kind of left in this real limbo state with them. And to the point where now, you know, there's a lot of talk and, and um, rumors coming out that DC doesn't have a cinematic universe anymore, that, that they are more focused on trying to do these one-off movies like Joker and things of that nature. So I agree that I think, you know, when, when you've got a bankable star like Margot Robbie, you would think that there would be plans in the works down the road, but maybe their feeling with this movie was, Hey, look, at the time we're scrapping the cinematic universe, you know, uh, the, the justice league movie killed it or it's dead. And if you want to kill Harley Quinn off, you go ahead and kill Harley Quinn off. If we want Margaret Robbie to come back, we'll do it. We'll bring her back as Harley Quinn in a movie like Joker or something that is completely removed from anything that came before. And we'll just tell the audience, Hey, it's the same actors, but it's a different thing. So. Right. I don't Which know. that's, that's the only thing that really would make sense to me at that point, because right when justice league was coming out, um, the main reason that, uh, it kind of went to shit in a lot of ways. Well, one of the big reasons was because uh, the AT&T merger was happening at that time. So there was a huge shift in just Warner Brothers, just corporate ladder in general. So like they, they had to rush all the, the Justice League stuff notoriously just so a lot of these people could get their bonuses by the end of the year before the merger happened. And that's one of the huge reasons why Justice League turned out to be the crap shoot it was, was because it didn't get delayed you know, into the, the following year because they needed it to come out so that they could all get their bonuses in that year because they may not have jobs come here, you know, and whatnot. But uh, that they, with, with like, the, 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 they could always go, I guess, the multiverse route with it too. Like, like is it, they, they, like, during DC fandom and everything, and then given, like, Walter Hamada seems to definitely want to be embracing and following the just, like, let's make a good movie kind of, you know, aspect of it. But it, it's almost like there are some sort of like mixed signals with it though, because like they, they're doing this, you know, focusing on making like solo movies to some degree. Right. Like, and they've said that, like, we're just going to make solo movies and focus on doing, you know, doing, making a good movie, whatever. But then you still have these characters who like are connected and they keep doing things with them. Like Harley Quinn just had her own Harley Quinn birds of prey movie connected to the Snyderverse because Ben Affleck was in there, Joker, like it's all connected. Then they're, they're doing the Snyder cut now and they're even letting him come in and add Jared Leto's Joker and add Joe Manganiello's Deathstroke to it. It's like, so they're bringing characters back and like connecting it even further. But then they're also making the movies that are like, you know, Joker that have zero connection and they're like Robert Pattinson's Batman, zero connection. Supposedly. Like, well, and then and then you've got you know you've got these theories or these rumors that Ben Affleck is going to have a Batman series on HBO Max, and you know, right. I, I mean, I feel like DC is just they're just taking whatever ideas that they think are good and going to roll with them, and they don't care how it's connected at this point. I feel like they're like, we'll figure it out later. This is a very yeah. fly by night, you know. This is just. That is we'll what figure it, it out feels like. like. That is definitely what it feels like. And I mean, I like that they are taking that approach to some degree. Because they should just focus, like, like James Gunn's hashtag here, like, story reigns supreme, right? I was like, it's true. I'd much rather these people focus on just making a good, a good story and telling a good story. But I don't want them to tell a good story, uh, you know, at the expense of destroying, you know, what could come in the future. You know what I mean? Like... It, it, like yeah it, you could have a cool shock value if like harley quinn dies but it's like okay if they had plans to make a harley and joker movie now it's just kind of like if you're gonna just fake death people then you lose all the stakes that you're adding by being able to kill them off you know what i mean yeah because sure. if they kill harley off like oh that's shocking but then she just comes back in another movie That'd anyway be kind of a cop out like, it's yeah just... it's the same thing as time travel and you know, Loki dying 500 times. Like, it's like when it happens, you're just like, okay, it's a comic book thing. He's already been back multiple. They'll probably be back anyway. So, I mean, a lot of the stakes aren't even there anymore. 
like with a lot of those I, things. I think with DC too, I think one of the things that, and you, you touched upon it is the AT&T merger. I think these big corporate mergers have much more of an effect on these, on these productions and these, and these stories than we would hope they would. And, and, and more than maybe even we think they do. Um, especially in this, in this case, because you have AT&T, which is a telecommunications giant acquiring an entertainment company. You know, when, when, when Disney bought Marvel and when Disney bought Star Wars, it made a little, there was more synergy there. You had an entertainment company buying two entertainment companies, buying two entertainment brands. So you had people who knew how to work with story and work with um, movie productions and television productions. You had all the all the same. They were they were all speaking the same language, and and so the the transitions into there were were probably easier to a certain extent. AT and T, a telecommunication. Ah, I can't speak. Telecommunications. They're yeah. telecommunications. <laughs> brand new company. Um, telecommunications giant acquiring an entertainment company. I mean, you've got people in in roles at the heads of AT and T. They have no background in in yeah. entertainment or movies, and and so you know they're they're doing. I'm sure a lot of theirs is coming down to analytics. It's coming down to test marketing. It's coming down to reports from bean counters. Um, and so and so you're the creative, uh, maybe the creative nuances that that you would have in in like a Marvel Disney situation just aren't there. And and I think it really hurts. And I think it's shown that it hurts with how disjointed everything with DC has been lately. Yeah, no, I agree. And that's where like someone like Kevin Feige comes into play, which like yeah. they don't really have never really had uh, th- definitely not to the level of Kevin Feige because Kevin Feige is just a fan like us. You know I mean? He's just lucky enough to where he was in a position and put in the time, you know, for years. He worked in like, he was just a set. I forget what he did, but he was just a, uh, he worked on the set of like the original X-Men movies and everything. You know what I mean? Like, he's been in the business and attached to the, you know, the comic book movies for many years prior to, you know, being the head of Marvel like he is now. But, like, DC has never had that person who, mm-hmm. like, at least Warner Brothers DC has never had that person there to just, like, shepherd everything in and, like, and not that everything needs to be connected, but, like, they, they tried to connect it, though. Like, that's kind of the problem. Is like, they, they set it all up and tried to connect it in a very disjointed and janky way just by, like, well, let's just do it because, you know, we can. So they did it. Yeah. And, like, that's, like, where it's this kind of... It gets murky now. Like, at least it could be just because, like, they do seem to be trying to distance themselves from, like, doing the shared connect universe stuff with the caveat of still doing stuff with those characters, which is just where, in my opinion, is when it gets kind of, like, murky, you know? Because, like, yeah, they did... Uh, I brought up before, like, the used... Uh, in, like, the Aquaman movie, it was, for all intents and purposes, a completely standalone movie. They make one short reference to him fighting Steppenwolf, and aside from that, it was a standalone movie. At the same time, he was in Justice League, so it's like... He, yeah. You still can't it just makes it more difficult. And this is where, like one of the kind of the problems with having a shared cinematic universe is like, you can't have Aquaman go out and just destroy all of New York or Metropolis or something like some, something crazy because that would obviously have to affect the other plate, like the other character somehow, you know what I mean? Like, and that's just kind of like how I feel about this. Uh, James Gunn being able to kill anybody he wanted. It's like, yeah, but they got to think about something. Like, there's got to be some thought going into keeping some of these. I mean, we got the yeah. character of, uh, uh, what's his name? John Cena's character is, he actually is getting a, 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 his own he, series. His own series, yeah. like, which it could be a prequel, so he could still That's die what you're in saying. it. But, prequel. I mean, at the same time, it's like, they, they obviously have plans. It just, again, it gets kind of murky when they're wanting to do all these separate things and like make standalone stuff. But we still want to keep doing stuff with Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman. You know, it's like we still want to do stuff with, you know, Jason Momoa and like Ben Affleck. And like, this gets confusing. Like, figure it out, get it all done. Let's well, not, like, I, li- I like the idea that people can die at any point in time, but I also don't want. I don't want just everybody to go and die willy-nilly. 
you know, like you don't want to lose yeah. out on some stuff. Like it's just interesting. Just having to kill for the sake of killing a murder, you know? Yeah. And like I said again, I don't want it to become fake death stuff because if I, yeah. I guarantee you, if they were to kill like Harley Quinn off, for instance, like she'd be back. Oh, yeah, yeah, like for she sure. would be back later, and so it just completely defeats the purpose of even going for that gut punch of losing Harley Quinn because, like, she's gonna be back. It's like when Peter Parker disintegrates in Infinity War at the end. It's like you knew he was coming back. Oh yeah, for like, sure. it's like good scene, sure, but like you know he's gonna come back. So like, does it really help anything narratively? Not really. Like, I mean, narratively, yes, but for the audience member, no. Like. You know he's back. You know Black Panther is coming back. You know what I mean? Like it's fine. Is there is there anybody else in the Suicide Squad cast besides Margot Robbie, besides Harley Quinn, that you would have been shocked to hear? Like if if it comes out and they die, that you'll be shocked that they died or that they got that they got killed off. No, I mean the only. Go ahead. I was gonna say surprisingly no, because I think. It depends on because there's a lot of new cast members in this one, right? Sure. And that, and I think depending on how good those characters are, like if because I feel like King Shark is going to be awesome because he has a lot of potential to be awesome, and they've been like doing a good job with King Shark character in the Harley Quinn animated series. Mm-hmm. So if they were to like if King Shark comes on screen and is like like a Drax kind of character, like and someone who just show. like steals the show, and they decide to kill him off, that'd be kind of dumb. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. And like, so like, given the cast of the people who is coming back for Suicide Squad two, I could see him killing any of them and it not really matter. Aside from Harley Quinn, you know, because like Captain Boomerang, like, who cares? Like, in all yeah. honesty, like, who cares? And then uh, Joel Kinnaman's character, Rick Flag. Rick Flag, yep. Love Joel Kinnaman, but who cares about Rick Flag? But what about know? Polka Dot? Dude? Polka Dot Man is probably one of those who's going to steal the damn show. That's what I'm saying. And he'll like, probably die. Like, you know I mean? That's yeah. where it's like, again, kind of a bummer because if you have someone that is like, you want them to be able to come back because if they, that's like the risky part of it. That's why like in the first one, they only killed off Slipknot because, and they didn't set him up with anything. Pri- like they made it where you didn't give a shit that Slipknot died in that movie. Yeah. Like, which is like kind of a blessing and a curse, right? Because like everyone, who like you want if you're gonna you have somebody die you want it to have some weight and his had none it was just like okay we killed yeah. it was it, his he was simply there to prove that they could they would kill them by blowing up the bomb in their that's head. it and it was it was it was a it was a um a plot device it wasn't even a character yeah, yeah. He, he was not a, he, of all of them he had like if i remember correctly no cool like intro thing or anything backstory nope. given to him at all he was just kind of there and yep. you're right, he served his purpose just by showing everyone else that they had bombs in their head. That was yeah. that was why he was there. Like that was it. Like it was dumb. So like, that's I, in my I, in my hierarchy of unkillable characters from Suicide Squad, I think Harley Quinn was right there at the top. Next, I would say would be Amanda Waller. Yeah, those um, are the only and I two. think I think just because Amanda Waller ties into the the government aspect of the DCEU and 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 they can branch her out into so many other stories. Plus Viola Davis is a, a pretty yeah. well-known actress. Yeah. And I think, I think she brings some, uh, some, some, brings some, some average, range. average viewer, uh, you know, knowledge of who she is. So she, she brings some eyeballs to the, to the show. Um, so those two would be the, the two in my hierarchy that I think would be, but even Amanda Waller, I think they could get away with killing easier than Harley Quinn, but I, yeah, I, I wouldn't be, good. I wouldn't be surprised if they kill off anybody. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. Like literally those are the only two that I would say you can't kill. Like literally it's just those two. Anyone else though, it just comes down to like how good of a character they were in this movie. You know, it's like boomerang had some fun stuff in the first one, but nothing to where like, you're not going to see a solo boomerang movie. Like it's not going to happen. So it's like, yeah, you could kill him off and like, you're not really going to lose anything out of that. You kill off Amanda Waller and Harley Quinn, you're kind of losing stuff in the future in some way. Like, potential. You're losing potential. Because, like, 
you could have another Suicide Squad movie with a lot more Amanda Waller in it with Viola Davis, and like Viola Dav- Davis can carry a movie by her- by herself. Yeah, like yeah. she like you don't want to like lose like it just be throwing away money. Like realistically, she may not be like bringing in a bunch of you know billions of dollars just like, but she's a phenomenal actress, and there's she has a huge fan base, and she's just a talent that you'd want to be able to keep around. So it would just make no point. And like the same could be said for a lot of the other cast members, but like I mean they got Nathan Fillion, Joel Kinnaman, like they got a bunch of great people in there. But yeah, I don't think any of the other characters, aside from like Harley Quinn and Amanda Waller, have any like real potential of being an essential character in upcoming movies like those two would, you know? So like that's why it's like in one way. Kind of just like, well, no shit, you could kill any of them, my dude, because no one cares about any of them other yeah. than Harley Quinn. Yeah. <laughs> so like, and it's like, we know you're not gonna kill Harley Quinn, dude. Like, there's like the, no the way. big, the big question becomes is if this movie hits as well as I hope and I think it will, are are they is everybody still going to be unkillable for the inevitable inevitable yeah. sequel? I can't talk for some reason. Is is this still going to be? Is everybody going to be you know up for being killed? in the sequel that they try and bring him back for. Yeah, and that kind of goes into my point with like it, a lot of it comes down to like how good these characters are, because if you have someone like King shark ends up being yep. as awesome as Drax is, if, if they kill him off, then like that kind of sucks for any plans for a sequel. But if they don't yep. kill him off and he sticks around and they make another one, chances are if he, t- if he hits as well as Drax or, you know, any of the like, or someone like Rocket Raccoon, you know, so you have any characters that like nail it like that, like if Weasel is the new Rocket and King Shark is the new Drax, like, yeah, they're not going to kill them off. So they're essentially going to end up inevitably have the Harley Quinn plot armor just because they became so popular in there. Do you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Do you think they're going to draw a lot of comparisons like that, though? You know, with like Drax and King Shark. I mean, you, you've mentioned that and like Weasel and everything. It sounds almost like. If that is the case, they're kind of just trying to copy Marvel, like straight up. Well, this is the same guy who wrote Guardians. Is the only reason. Yeah, I don't. I'm, yeah, it's the only reason I think, I'm bringing I think up that comparison. The natural inclination to do that. I think that's going to happen just because, like you said, it's, it's the same guy that did Guardians. He's doing this one. You've got these, you know, animal-based characters and Weasel and Rocket. You've got these, you know, big muscle-bound brutes and King Shark and Drax. Drax. I mean, there's going to be some natural correlation between the, the characters but until we see the movie i don't think i don't think it's gonna I, I but i understand what you're saying and just in terms of drax was a nobody character i mean nobody cared. oh for sure the yeah. average mu- movie goer didn't give two craps about drax like they didn't even know who it was um the average movie goer is going to sit here king shark and go are you serious a half man half shark like how is that going to be right good? yeah um but oh, but am, he yeah. the way he was able to take these these virtually unknown and unheard of characters and turn them into household names and beloved characters. I, I I understand where you're coming from, from that angle. If he's able to do that with these, with these characters to take these C list characters and turn them into B or a list characters that people want to go back and see again, if you kill them off, you can't do that. You can't entice people to come back because yeah. they're dead. That's what worries me is because like given James Gunn's sensibilities with ex- Drax aside, like no one knew who the Guardians of the Galaxy were. Sure, like, I didn't. you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, no one knew anything about that stuff. James Gunn comes in, writes some amazing characters with amazing dialogue with great actors, and now everybody knows who the Guardians of the Galaxy are, and they love them. And a character like Drax, who really had very little to do in the the second movie, like he he literally became comic relief. Like That's in, like, basically all. Drax yeah. the Destroyer has not destroyed anything. Okay? <laughs> like he's uh, like literally the only time he's destroyed anything was in that opening scene of the second one where he's stabbing the thing. Yeah. And like that's it. Like he just turned into comic relief. But like that's what that's that's honestly though, at the same time, it's one of the main reasons I'm looking forward to this movie is because of James Gunn. And like now that I like the the him being able to kill everybody, like I said, was always kind of there, like you know, in in some ways, and like because with a lot of these characters, like the huge cast of C and D list characters that no one's gonna care if they die other than Harley Quinn. But like, I'm only worried now about it because I know how good he is at writing, 
and like making characters like just really good and lovable. Make him pop, yeah. Yeah, so now I'm worried that like he's going to end up killing off like the some of these people who are going to steal the show. I'm just worried about that now, more so than anything. So but the question is, guys, what do you think about this? Are you kind of with with us in the same in the same vein that like, yeah, dude, like we kind of we get that you'd be able to kill anybody because, you know, everyone there is like we don't even know who, if you look at a picture of half the cast you probably can't even name what character they are uh, i mean aside from polka dot man really or weasel <laughs> king shark maybe but you look at the other ones you're just like you don't even know who they are you know you'd have to look at imdb just figure it out so it's like yeah you probably could kill him but then obviously there's no way they're going to kill someone like harley quinn you know what i mean so whatever you guys think about this stuff you just let us know down in the comment section below